Have you seen yellow straps which are positioned at some places with police do not cross caption written on it? You might have seen in many TV shows and web series. So these straps are positioned to secure a place which is called as crime scene. So today I am going to discuss about an introduction to crime scene. Hello guys, I am Tushar Ajara Mahire. Welcome back to my channel Tushar's Online Forensics. So without any delay, let's explore the forensics. What is crime scene? So the crime scene is a place where the crime has been occurred or it is the location that may be linked with the committed crime that may provide the potential evidences to the investigating officer. Now, Let's talk about the significance or importance of crime scene. As vehicles run on fuel, forensics run on physical evidences. So the crime scene may provide the potential and important physical evidences to the officer. According to the principle of exchange, when two things come in contact with each other, they leave traces or they transfer the traces to each other. And according to this principle, crime scene possesses evidence. These evidences are key to catch the criminal and to solve the particular crime. Physical evidence covers any and all objects that can establish that the crime has or has not been committed or can link a crime with its culprit and the victims. So this is the main and important significance of crime scene. And that's the reason to place the yellow barricades to protect the evidences by prohibiting the entry of unauthorized persons. So let's talk about the important factor of crime scene management that is processing of crime scene. What does it mean? So the processing of crime scene means the proper handling of crime scene, which includes securing the crime scene, recording the crime scene, searching the crime scene, collection and packaging of physical evidences, chain of custody and submitting the evidences to the laboratory for analysis. So let's talk about the securing crime scene. So the first officer or person who comes on the crime scene that is called as first responding officer will be responsible for securing the crime scene. The first priority of this officer is to give medical assistance to the person who need it. And the second priority is to collect and preserve the evidences. Now, the scene of crime has to be secure and protected to prohibit the entry of unauthorized person. If the area left unsecured, then the transfer, loss or contamination of evidence can occur. After securing the crime scene, the second step is recording the crime scene, which is very much important. Why? Because the crime scene examiner needs to see the crime scene for investigation at any point of time. There is a limited time on site to see the crime scene untouched so that the recording of crime scene is very much important. Notes, photography or videography and sketches are the method of recording the crime scene. These records are not only useful for the investigation but also for the courtroom trials. After recording the crime scene, the third step is to search in the crime scene, which is depending on the number of investigators present on the crime scene. A spiral, grid, linear or quadrant pattern method is used to search. And if an evidence is found, the location of evidence is marked, photographed and sketched at the same time. If single investigator is present on the crime scene, he might or she might use grid, linear or spiral pattern. If a group of investigators present on the crime scene, they might use linear, zone or quadrant pattern. These patterns are systematic, ensuring that no area is left unsearched. Once any evidence found on the crime scene, the collection and packaging of evidence is the next step. So all evidences needs to be properly packaged, sealed and labeled. Liquids and arson remains are stored in the airtight, unbreakable containers. Moist biological evidence is stored in the breathable container so that they can dry out with reducing the contamination of molds. After the evidence is allowed to air dry, it is packaged in the paper bundle. 
the bundle then can be placed in a plastic or paper container this outer container is then sealed with the tape and labeled with the signature of the collector an evidence log and the chain of custody document must be attached to the evidence container chain of custody it is the most and one of the most important factor after collecting and packaging the evidence what is chain of custody so the chain of custody is a list of all people who came into possession of an item of evidence means from locating the evidence marking it for identification to handling over it for laboratory analysis is the best guarantee that the evidence will withstand inquiries of what happened to it from the time of its finding to its presentation in court this means that every person who handled or examined the evidence must be accounted for it to maintain the authenticity and integrity of an evidence the last factor in crime scene management is submitting the evidences to laboratory so the submission of an evidence is done by personal delivery and by courier or postal delivery but the best and ideal method is personal delivery by the person who is involved in the case why because to facilitate any discussion between laboratory personnel and the deliverer concerning specific aspects of the case so guys this was all about the introduction to the crime scene hope you have liked the video if you haven't subscribed my channel please press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to explore the forensics comment your thoughts in comment box below like and share the video to your friends and family we'll meet in the next video till then stay tuned to the tof bye bye thank you